Have you ever wondered who sets the rules for the skies? What keeps all those planes in line up there? It's not just the pilot's skill or the air traffic controller's vigilance. There's a universal playbook guiding aviation operations worldwide, and it's called ICAO Annex 2. The International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICO, is the global body responsible for setting standards and regulations to ensure aviation safety, security, efficiency, and regularity. Annex 2 is a crucial part of this framework, serving as the rules of the air. These rules apply globally, and they are designed to ensure that all aircraft, regardless of their size or purpose, can operate safely in international airspace. So if you've ever sat in a plane, flown a drone, or just gazed up at the sky, these rules have played a part in shaping your experience. So buckle up as we take a deep dive into the world of ICAO Annex 2. To truly understand ICAO Annex 2, we need to journey back in time to its roots. The story of ICAO Annex 2, much like the industry it serves, is one of constant evolution. Its origin can be traced back to the creation of the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, in the mid-20th century. Born out of the need for a cohesive set of global rules for air navigation, ICAO Annex 2 was first introduced in the early 1950s. The initial version was a rudimentary guide, establishing the fundamental principles for air navigation. But as the aviation industry grew and technology advanced, so did the complexity and scope of Annex 2. The second half of the 20th century saw rapid advancements in aviation, jet engines, supersonic travel, and the advent of air traffic control systems brought about significant changes to the way we fly. To keep pace with these changes, Annex 2 underwent a series of revisions, each adding new layers of rules and regulations to match the evolving landscape of aviation. The turn of the millennium brought with it the digital revolution, and with it, a whole new set of challenges and opportunities for aviation. The rise of unmanned aircraft systems, commonly known as drones, led to a paradigm shift in air navigation. Recognizing the need to adapt, ICAO made substantial amendments to Annex 2, incorporating regulations for these new players in the sky. Today, ICAO Annex 2 stands as a testament to the resilience and adaptability of the aviation industry. It continues to evolve in response to new technologies, operational practices, and safety challenges. From its humble beginnings to the comprehensive guide it is today, ICAO Annex 2 has been instrumental in shaping the modern aviation landscape. As aviation advanced, so did Annex 2, ensuring that the skies remain safe and orderly. Now that we've explored the history, let's delve into the heart of Annex 2, the rules. When it comes to flying, the general rules outlined in ICAO Annex 2 are the compass guiding pilots through the sky. They may seem simple on the surface, but they form the foundation of global aviation, ensuring that every flight, from takeoff to landing, is conducted safely and efficiently. At the top of the hierarchy, we have the pilot in command. The pilot in command holds ultimate responsibility for the safety of the flight. This includes everything from making sure the aircraft is in proper working order to making crucial decisions in the air. It's a big responsibility, one that requires a cool head, sharp skills, and an in-depth understanding of the rules. Next, we have the authority over the aircraft. This refers to the person or entity that holds the legal rights to operate the aircraft. In most cases, this will be the airline or owner of the aircraft. They have the power to decide when and where the aircraft flies, but they must always work within the framework of the rules set out in Annex 2. These general rules also cover a wide range of other aspects of flight. They dictate how aircraft should interact with each other in the air to prevent collisions. They lay out the procedures for communicating with air traffic control. They even detail how pilots should respond in emergency situations. But what's important to remember is that these rules aren't just a list of do's and don'ts. They're a reflection of decades of aviation history and experience. They've been shaped by the lessons learned from past incidents and are continually updated to incorporate new technologies and practices. These rules, although seemingly straightforward, are the backbone of global air travel. They ensure that no matter where you are in the world, the sky above you is governed by a common set of principles. 
making air travel one of the safest and most efficient forms of transportation we have today. And so, as we navigate the vast skies, these rules serve as our guiding stars, helping us find our way through the complex world of aviation. In the world of aviation, two rules reign supreme, VFR and IFR. But what do these acronyms mean? Visual Flight Rules, or VFR, are a set of regulations under which a pilot operates an aircraft in weather conditions generally clear enough to allow the pilot to see where the aircraft is going. Essentially, flying under VFR means you use your eyesight as your primary navigation tool. VFR is the easier and less restrictive of the two, and is typically used by smaller aircraft and hobbyist pilots. It's the equivalent of driving a car and using your eyes to keep you on the road. On the other hand, Instrument Flight Rules, or IFR, is a set of rules governing the conduct of flight under instrument meteorological conditions. This means that the aircraft is primarily navigated using instruments rather than by sight. IFR is used by commercial and professional pilots to fly in poor visibility conditions, such as fog, heavy cloud cover, or nighttime. Now how do VFR and IFR differ? The key difference lies in how the aircraft is navigated. Under VFR, the pilot uses visual cues, such as the horizon, landmarks, and the position of the sun to navigate. Under IFR, the pilot relies on instruments to navigate, including altimeters, compasses, and navigation radios. Let's take weather conditions as an example. On a clear day with minimal cloud cover, a pilot can fly under VFR, using their sight to navigate. But if the weather turns bad with heavy cloud cover or fog, visibility drops and the pilot can no longer rely on sight. In these instances, the pilot would switch to IFR, using their instruments to navigate instead. Whether it's VFR or IFR, these rules guide pilots through all conditions, ensuring a safe journey. Air traffic controllers, ever wonder what they actually do? They are the gatekeepers of the sky, ensuring that the complex web of air traffic flows smoothly and safely. Their role is defined under Annex 2 of the International Civil Aviation Organization's Rules of the Air. These dedicated professionals provide vital services that support flight safety. From the moment an aircraft pushes back from the gate to the time it taxis to its arrival gate at its destination, air traffic controllers are in constant communication with the pilots. They provide crucial information like weather updates, runway conditions, and other operational data that pilots need to ensure a safe flight. They also manage the flow of air traffic, coordinating takeoffs and landings to prevent collisions and ensure efficient use of airspace. They guide pilots during their flight, providing navigational assistance and coordinating with other controllers to ensure smooth transitions between different airspace sectors. In times of distress, air traffic controllers are the lifeline for pilots providing guidance and coordinating emergency services. Their role is not just about managing the sky, it's about safeguarding lives. They are the unsung heroes of aviation, orchestrating the harmony in the skies. Enough theory, let's see Annex 2 in action. Imagine this, you're a pilot cruising at 30,000 feet when suddenly a storm appears on the horizon. You're faced with a decision to divert or continue. If you're familiar with Annex 2, you know it's not just about what you see, but what your instruments are telling you. You check your radar and see the storm is indeed in your path. You know the rules, safety first. So you contact air traffic control, inform them of the situation, and request a new flight path. This scenario is a perfect example of how Annex 2 guides real-life decision-making in the sky. It provides a clear framework for pilots to navigate unexpected situations, ensuring the safety of everyone on board. It's not just about following procedures. It's about making informed decisions based on the rules set out in Annex 2. As you can see, Annex 2 is not just a set of rules. It's a lifesaver. We've covered a lot, but you may still have questions. Let's tackle some of the most common ones. One frequently asked question is, do the rules of Annex 2 apply to all flights? The answer is yes. Annex 2 rules are universal applying to all aircraft during all phases of flight, from takeoff to landing. Another common query is, who is responsible for adhering to these rules? The onus primarily falls on the pilot in command, who must ensure that the aircraft and its occupants adhere to the rules at all times. Many also wonder, 
What happens if these rules are not followed? Well, violations can lead to serious consequences, including penalties, license suspensions, and in extreme cases, criminal charges. Lastly, a popular question is, are these rules subject to change? Absolutely. The rules are regularly reviewed and updated to respond to advancements in technology and changes in operational practices. Remember, no question is too small when it comes to safety in the skies. In a rapidly evolving industry like aviation, staying updated is key. This holds true for the International Civil Aviation Organization's Annex 2. As the rules of the air, Annex 2 is subject to periodic revisions to accommodate advancements in technology, changes in operational procedures, and to address new safety concerns. These updates ensure that Annex 2 remains relevant and effective in maintaining the safety and efficiency of international air navigation. For instance, there have been amendments to the rules governing the use of unmanned aircraft and the procedures for air traffic services. These changes reflect the growing prevalence of drones in airspace and the need for robust systems to manage increasing air traffic volumes. Another notable update pertains to the rules for pilot responsibility and authority. As cockpit technology evolves and autonomous systems become more prevalent, the role of the pilot is undergoing a transformation. The updates to Annex 2 reflect these shifts, ensuring that the rules of the air continue to promote safety and efficiency in this new era of aviation. Change is the only constant in aviation and Annex 2 is no exception. Oh, we've traversed through the history, rules and real-life applications of Annex 2. What's next? Well, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've covered. We've journeyed from the inception of IKO Annex 2, understanding its evolution over time. We've dissected the general rules, the responsibilities of pilots, and distinguished between visual and instrument flight rules. We've also explored the crucial role of air traffic services and how they enhance safety in flight operations. We dived into some frequently asked questions and highlighted the latest updates to keep you current. We've seen how these regulations play out in real-world scenarios, underlining their significance. To delve deeper into this fascinating world of aviation regulations, we recommend visiting the International Civil Aviation Organization's official website. They offer a wealth of resources, updates, and detailed explanations on Annex 2 and other regulations. With this knowledge, you're now equipped to navigate the rules of the air. Until next time, safe travels.